Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to look through a short XED exercise, which is useful for helping to practice the interpretation of cross-price elasticity values. If you want to have a look at the theoretical explanation of cross-price elasticity, you can look at one of the other videos that's on this YouTube channel. So let's get started. What we're doing in this exercise is we've got a table which shows two different products and we're looking at the relationship between those products and we're trying to work out basically are they strong or weak complements or substitutes. And so the way that this works is you say what do you think that the impact of a 20% fall in the price of the first product in this table here will be on the demand for the second product um, picking from the options below. So it says here that you've got like, you know, rises more than proportionally, rises less than proportionally. Is there no change? Does it fall less than proportionally? Or does it fall more than proportionally? And we've, and we've got this table here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through the table in just a minute, is I'm just gonna sort of give you my own interpretations of this. But it might be an idea if you want to, if you have some time, is to, is to copy down this table in your notes and then, you know, and pause this video and then just have a little think. So after you've, after you've copied on the table of, for these 13 different products, then just think to yourself, right, what's going to be the demand? How's, how's the demand for the second product going to change following the, 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 the fall in the price of the first product? So if you'd like to, you can go ahead and do that. And in just a minute, I will review my interpretation of these answers. All right, I hope you've had a chance to, to think that through. And now I'm just going to do my review of these answers. So the first one, 20% fall in the price of petrol is going to have an impact on the demand for cars. These cars are complementary products. So I'm thinking that if there's a fall in the price of petrol, then that's going to mean that there's going to be a rise in the demand for cars. But I do think that it's probably gonna be less than proportional. Because, yes, people are going to be buying more cars, but a, a car is a very large expense. And so therefore, you know, the fact that the petrol has changed may mean that, might mean that people um, buy a few more cars, but it's not going to really have a, a significant impact on, on the sale of cars. It's going to be a relatively, a relatively muted change in the, in the number of people who are demanding cars. And so therefore, I think it would be less than proportional. Let's have a look at this one. For tea and coffee, these are substitute products, and so therefore a fall in the price of T is going to lead to a fall in the demand for coffee, right? Because they're, they're substitutes. And so therefore there will be a positive relationship between falling price and the fall in demand for coffee. However, I think that it's probably going to be less than proportional. And why is that? It's, it's probably because there are lots of people out there who are just, you know, they're just coffee drinkers. They want to drink coffee. They're not really interested in switching to tea. And so therefore the fact that the, the, the tea has gone down, you'll get a few people that will probably want to start drinking more tea and less coffee. But I'd imagine that the majority of, of coffee drinkers are probably going to be, you know, quite, quite loyal to their coffee. And so therefore you're probably not going to see a very, very strong change in the demand for coffee. All right, let's look at question number three, Xbox and Call, Call of Duty. These are complementary products. And so therefore, if the price of Xbox falls, then I'm going to imagine that the demand for Call of Duty is going to rise. Now, Xbox is sort of the, 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 the expensive item of the two. Call of Duty is going to be a little less expensive. And so therefore, I'd imagine that if there is a fall in the price of Xboxes and many more people are buying Xboxes, I'm imagining that a lot of those people are going to be buying the game Call of Duty. And this might be a bit out of date. I'm not really into my game. So whatever like sort of the, the newest game is, but I'm going to say that this is probably go going to be a more than proportional increase in demand for Call of Duty, um, which suggests that they are, yes, complementary products, but they're also going to be um, strong complements. And so therefore in, in, in a, a, a change which is elastic in its relationship. Let's have a look at this. BP petrol versus Shell petrol. These are substitute goods. And so therefore a 
fall in the price of BP petrol will mean that there's a fall in the demand for Shell petrol. I believe that these these products here, there's not going to be very much loyalty between people who use BP or people who use Shell. And so therefore, if, if BP petrol has a fall in its price, I reckon that most people that are that are buying from Shell are going to are going to move over, and so you know there's not going to be like a loyalty thing like what there was with with um, with tea and coffee. So I think there's going to be a more than proportional change in the quantity demanded for for Shell petrol. Let's have a look at this one then. Um, Xbox versus PlayStation 4. These are substitute goods. And so therefore, if the price of the Xbox falls, we can expect there to be a fall in the demand for PlayStation 4. Now, the question of whether or not it's more or less than proportional depends on the loyalty that people have for their gaming system. I don't play very many games, but I, I expect that people who are into their PlayStation are going to be quite loyal to it. And so therefore, I think that if the price of Xbox falls, there will be a less than proportional change in the quantity demanded for PlayStation 4, just because more people are going to be, like I said, loyal to that um, to their gaming system. They're not going to necessarily change just because the price of it has changed. Next one, cars and petrol. Now remember that this is a, this is just like the relationship here. You know, it's, it's the same as number one, but it's just the reverse. So we'll see how we can interpret this. And now for cars and petrol, uh, we know that they are complementary products, and so therefore, if the price of cars goes down, we'll see a rise in the quantity demanded for petrol. I think that this rise, because cars are the more expensive product, and petrol is the relatively inexpensive complementary product that goes with, with, um, with driving a car, is I believe that there is going to be a more than proportional rise in the quantity demanded for petrol. Because this, these 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 cheap cars now that e means that everyone's going to be able to to purchase cars or more people will be able to purchase the cars because they're because they've fallen twenty percent in price and I think that everybody who needs a car needs to use petrol and so because it's because it's the more expensive thing which is reducing in price and then all those people are now buying more petrol and maybe they never bought any petrol before because why would you if you didn't have a car is i think that's going to mean that there's going to be a very big very strong relationship and there's going to be a big, big change to um to the quantity demanded for petrol so therefore a more than proportional change a more than proportional rise for the next one cars and motorcycles so they are substitute goods and so therefore if the price of of cars falls i'm going to be expecting the quantity of the quantity demanded for motorcycles to fall as well but um, I, I, I don't expect everybody who is um, who is riding a motorcycle, who, who wants to ride a motorcycle, is going to um, is going to suddenly buy a car. I would imagine that there are some people out there who just like their motorcycles and um, and and want and, you know want to drive motorcycles. So there's some loyalty. So I think there's going to be a less than proportional response um, in terms of the. Uh, the, the relationship or the, the, the impact of demand after uh, on motorcycles following the fall in the price of cars. Next one, cars and bananas. I think I, I've put this one in here to be sort of the, the, the kind of, you know, this is the one where it's probably going to be no change, right? You know, if, if, if suddenly people, if, if, if the price of cars goes down, um, I don't really see how that's going to change people's buying habits for bananas. Bananas being a relatively inexpensive good which aren't really related to driving cars so more people buying cars i don't see them buying more bananas um, i once had a student say that maybe they you know people could go to the grocery store more often to buy more bananas i think that's quite a, a tenuous relationship so uh, I, I i would say there's probably going to be no change or at least that's the that's the expected relationship that i had for that uh bananas and apples though let's see bananas and apples uh let's see Ooh, this is a this is an interesting one I'm going to say that primarily these are going to be substitute goods. And so if they're substitute goods, a fall in the price of bananas is going to be a fall in the quantity demanded for apples because, because um, you know, they're fruit. And if you're hungry for a bit of fruit, then you're going to buy one or the other. And so therefore, the cheaper bananas mean that you don't need to have as many apples. I think this is going to be less than proportional. It's going to be a less than proportional change. Uh, just because, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, like, it's not that strong a substitute, is it? You know, if you if you need a, 
you know, there are going to be people out there who just like their like their apples and price of bananas doesn't really change it. Also, think about the the percentage of the, your income that's spent on on this fruit. Um, I don't think that people are really going to restrict their their apple consumption because um, bananas are so, suddenly so much cheaper. Um, so I, maybe a few people will, but I think that it's primarily going to be quite less than proportional. I mean, now some people might say, and I would I I, I could I would be sympathetic to this argument, is maybe you're going to see a um, maybe you're going to see a rise in the in the quantity demanded for for apples, right? So I'm going to say fall or rise. Um, if you consider apples to be complements to bananas, then that's fine, right? Maybe you're making a fruit salad. You're not eating one or the other. You're just making lots of sort of fruit salad with uh, apples and bananas in it as ingredients. And so therefore, actually, the cheaper bananas mean, hey, that's great. Let's buy more apples. Um, so I think, you know, so long as your assumptions are right, I think that you could say either way. But I still think it's probably going to be less than proportional. More people are just sort of buying apples independently, I should think, of bananas. Next one here is going to be bus travel and cars. So they are substitute products. So I would imagine that if the price of bus travel fall, travel fars, the quantity demanded for cars is going to fall. Um, this I think is going to be quite less than proportional, right? Because um, because uh, you know like bus travel, um, it, you know they are both modes of transportation. But I should think that there are also other things that make people want to have cars and and um, and and use cars rather than buses, and so therefore, just because it's suddenly there are cheaper cheaper options, um, a lot, I think more people will still want to use bus travel, and so therefore it will probably be less a proportional change. Now, Avion and Volvic, these are two brands of of bottled water, and so I think that the relationship between them they are going to be substitutes. So therefore, if the price of Evian falls, um, therefore you will see a fall in the quantity demanded for um, Volvic bottled water. The the extent of the relationship, the, 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 the amount of proportional change, I think depends on your assumptions about how much people are willing to switch. I, I my, my gut feeling is that people aren't going to be very, very loyal to their, to, to their bottled water so therefore, if if um if suddenly Avion goes down in price, we're going to see a more than proportional change um, in quantity demanded for um for 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 Volvic. So Volvic bottled water brand is going to see a, see a um quite significant fall. Of course, that assumption might be incorrect. You know, maybe actually people really value their Volvic and they they want that more than their Avion. There's loyalty there, so it might be a less than proportional change. Um, iTunes, iPhones and iTunes downloads. Uh, this is maybe a bit out of date because, of course, now it's mostly music streaming services that we use. Um, if the iPhone, these are complementary products. If the price of iPhones goes down, I reckon that there's going to be a rise in the number of iTunes downloads. Um, I think it's going to be more than proportional, right? It's going to be a more than proportional rise in iTunes downloads because because suddenly you know, fall in price in iPhones. Everyone's going to buy one, or people, a lot more people are going to buy them. Um, most of those people who have an iPhone are going to probably use the iTunes Store to download things, and so therefore, I should think that that's going to be see a significant increase in the number of iTunes downloads that that, that, that happen. Um, and the final one here, uh, grapes and tomatoes. Let's say uh, the price of grapes goes down. What's going to happen to the quality demanded for tomatoes? I mean, I'm I'm going to put this in here as sort of no change. Right, I think that I think that they're not really uh, having a hard time imagining a situation where you're going to be substituting or using them in a complementary way. Grapes and tomatoes. Um, I, I guess they're both edible. If you if you eat grapes and the price of grapes goes down, maybe you're going to buy more grapes and have fewer tomatoes. But they're not really very substitutable, right? You know, what do we? You know, you have grapes because uh, you know, nice healthy snack. Um, Tomatoes, you know, also healthy. Go in a, a sandwich as a slice. I, I don't think there's going to be very much of a relationship there. You could argue that maybe there could be some degree of complementary nature or substitute nature. Um, I think that at the very least it will be quite insignificant. So yeah, that's that exercise done. I hope you found it useful. It's just it's just a way of thinking about the different sorts of factors that affect what the relationship is between different products and how we can use that to interpret their cross-price elasticity of demand.
when it says down here, what do you think the rules will be for XED regarding substitutes and complements? Well, obviously, if the if if they're substitute goods, then we'll say that that XED is therefore going to be um, positive, right? So substitutes, like we said, are positive, and therefore complements are going to be negative, and so therefore a fall in the price for a substitute good is going to lead to a fall in the quantity demanded for the for for for, for, the, for the other good, and likewise with complements, a fall in the price is going to lead to a rise in the, in the demand for the other good. But also, I think the nature of the relationship between the two different goods comes into play here as well, because. You know, it depends on which one you're looking at. If you're looking at, say, like, you know, cars relationship to petrol, I think changing the price of cars has a significant impact on the on the quantity demanded for petrol. And that's actually more of a more of a relationship change than you will see if you change the price of petrol, looking at the relationship with cars. But essentially the and, and, and of course, the other things that are going to affect it as well is, you know, what's the price of the product? Right, you know, bananas are relatively inexpensive. If the price goes down, is it really going to affect your consumption of apples? You know, probably not. Um, but the main thing that we're looking at here is sort of how how well used are those products together, or how much of a substitute are those products for each other? If they are really strong complements or substitutes, strong complements would be like, you know, if you buy a car, what's the relationship with petrol? Well, that's a very like. Petrol is a very complementary product for, for, for using a car, because if you're driving a car, you're definitely going to want to, to, to use petrol. So therefore, it'd be a strong complementary relationship between those two goods. Likewise, with maybe tennis rackets and tennis balls, right? You know, if you buy a tennis racket, um, I feel I don't really play tennis, but I, I should imagine that you're almost certainly going to want to buy the tennis balls that go with it, because to use a tennis racket, you're going to want to, to, to buy the, the, the tennis balls. So, so, so tennis balls are very complementary good for tennis rackets. However, if you look the other way around, if you say how complementary are tennis rackets, if you if you think about the price of tennis balls, well, actually, you know, the, the, the there are, there are some people who actually will you know buy tennis balls. But maybe they don't play tennis. Maybe they just got a dog. So therefore, you know, they, you know, the their use of, of that good doesn't actually depend on another good, which is actually complementary in nature. And so therefore, so like you know, working one way it might be a strong complement. Working the other way, it might actually be a bit more weak. What you might ex be expected to do is to just look at a figure and say, you know, are they complements? Are they substitutes? Are they strong? Are they weak? Complements and substitutes. And if you get that sort of question, just remember, just to look at the number line here and to say that anything which is negative is going to be a complement, anything which is positive is going to be a substitute, and a strong complement will be between minus infinity and minus one, a weak complement will be between minus one and zero, a weak substitute will be between zero and one, and a, and a strong substitute will be between one and infinity. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for more useful economics content. Mm -hmm.